What is up guys, Josh here with TerrierOwner.com. We have Luna out like usual. And today's video is kind of similar to last week, but this video is all about the biggest mistakes that I think that I've made with raising a Jack Russell Terrier. It's meant to help you guys out if you're planning to adopt soon, or maybe you recently just got a Jack Russell. But we're gonna cover some of the things I did wrong that I think you could do better at, or that I think would help you and your Jack Russell in general, and we're starting right now. All right guys, what is happening? Welcome back to another Sunday morning video. We appreciate you guys coming back. As always, if you've been enjoying the videos, give us a thumbs up on this one here. It helps us out dramatically. Be sure to consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the notification button so you're notified every Sunday at 11 a.m. Central for these new videos. And never forget to check out the blog at terrierowner.com or check out the description down below for that website link and all of the useful products that I recommend for this dog. Otherwise guys, let's jump into the first mistake that I think I made that I could have done better at with Luna here and that is puppy classes. Do I think that puppy classes are required or that important? Not really. I've used them once in the past and I have had several dogs over the course of my life. The reason I think puppy classes would be so good for a Jack Russell though isn't necessarily for the obedience training, it is for the socialization. I thought to myself in my head, you know, where I messed up with getting her around other dogs as soon as possible. Again, she's not terrible with other dogs, but she's not a huge fan, except for with Graham. She likes Graham because they live together. But puppy classes is a great way for your dog to just get exposed to a lot of other dogs in a small space at a young age. It breaks them in, it relieves some of that anxiety into the future because they're comfortable with it. And of course you get the obedience training out of it too. Not to mention some bonding time with your new puppy. So one of the biggest mistakes I think I made is not deciding to do puppy classes with her. And I should have. They're really not that expensive for what you get. And if all you get out of it is some socialization, money well spent in my opinion for a dog like this. So that is mistake number one that I made. Mistake number two that I made, guys, is that I was not super prepared for the difference in potty training difficulty with this dog compared to my yellow lab. I think a lot of that you know, goes back to how small this dog is, bladder size, how quickly food moves through the digestive tract, but I just wasn't really ready to have to fight it as much as I did in those first six months. Was this stupidity on my end? Most likely. I should have done a little more research, but one of the mistakes that I made was just thinking it was going to be, you know, a walk in the park like that. Easy peasy. And I'm not saying it was super difficult. I am just simply saying it was more difficult than I anticipated and it took a little longer than I thought it would. So if you're thinking about adopting soon, keep that in mind and say super, super disciplined and consistent with it. Get it out of the way fast so you don't have to worry about it. And then this won't be one of the mistakes that you make with your Jack Russell. Number three, guys, comes back to consistency again. Consistency, consistency with this dog is a big thing, right? And it is with all the dogs. But I, one of the mistakes I made is I didn't have a set plan on discipline and training. That doesn't mean I wasn't performing it. It means that I got a little inconsistent with my methods when she was young. And I realize now going back on it that all this probably did is confuse her. And then when I got consistent and whenever I stayed with the same approach is whenever I didn't really have issues anymore. When she finally could click in her head that, hey, this is how it works, things got so much easier. So it's easy to say that you know how to train a dog or you know how to discipline and provide you know, basic commands and things like that, but it's the planning part of it that I did not do well and one of the mistakes that I made. So if you are adopting soon, don't just say you're going to do it, but have a plan. You know, what is going to be allowed? What is not going to be allowed? How are you going to communicate that to your dog? Where is the dog going to sleep? Things like that. If you're consistent, they are super smart and they will pick up on it. But when you're all over the place, it confuses them and it makes it more difficult for them to realize what is right and what is wrong. So again, don't just, say you're going to do it but have a plan on how you're going to do it right after the adoption this next one guys is not a huge deal and i know a ton of dog owners who could care less about this but it's a mistake that i made and you honestly can't really reverse it once it's done once it's done the damage is done but they're so cute when they're little it's so hard not to allow it but i allowed her on all the furniture right out of the gates the only place that she doesn't go with me is the bed 
and it's not because I don't allow her on it, it's because I can't stand sleeping with her because even though she's a cuddle bug, she spins in circles 50 times a night. She can never get comfortable. She buries herself under the blankets. It's just, it's not fun and it ruins my sleep. But like the couches and the chairs, it's forever now, right? You can't do it for a couple years and go back and be like, oh, I changed my mind because I'm sick of vacuuming dog hair. She's allowed up there and it's not that I don't want her up there. It's just now looking back on it. It may have been a good idea to keep her off of it because there's things that you don't even think about, right? There's getting the couches shampooed, the dirty paws, the access to taller windows that lets her bark at the people that she sees outside. Again, if I could go back, I probably would have tried to train it to where she wasn't allowed up on the furniture, but it's too late. And again, I know that a lot of you don't care about this and you would be fine with them up there. More power to you if that's the case, but some of you may be on the fence and I'm telling you that, you know, pick whichever side you want, but there's, you know, pros and cons to each. Will it reduce cuddle time a little bit if they can't get up there? Yes. Will it keep your furniture clean, not muddy, and you a little bit of your own space? Yes, because remember, it doesn't matter if they're on the furniture or not. Wherever you're at, they're attached to you anyways, so maybe you just want that few minutes on the couch watching an NFL game without the dog up in your face nonstop. Maybe you do. But if you start with them up there, don't try and go back on it because A, that's confusing for them, and B, it's not going to work anyway, so good luck. Guys, the next biggest mistake I made, and this is a big one with this dog, is there were times where I let her win. I'll let you figure out what that means. We don't have to go into a ton of details, but this comes down to training, obedience, giving in in certain situations. Don't let them win. I'm not saying make their life miserable. I'm saying that if you have a rule or if they do something wrong, consistency with what it is, they should never win that you know, silent mental argument with you. If you do, these dogs are smart enough to know that, hey, I can inch that close next time too. This is what happens when I do that. Easy examples of this, I will give you a few, would be things like whining in a crate. You know, the second you pull them out because you're annoyed at the whining, she wins, right? Again, it feels cruel when you're doing that, but it's not. Um, it's just how they learn and how they get over separation anxiety. So. Whatever the situation is, or however it applies, don't let them win. They, they're perfectly happy not winning once they know the rules, but mistake I made is this cute face overpowered me a few times and she has won a few of those mental arguments with me. Guys, one of the next biggest mistakes that I made with this dog is I did not understand what a fireball they can be outside. My fence has always been fenced in since I've lived here, so the fence was ready. Uh, the yard was in very good shape until this puppy came along. It, it's fine now too, right? Don't get me wrong or scared to adopt, but I just wasn't ready for the dog that's sprinting 25 miles an hour, doing zoomies out back, digging a hole, jumping the fence, and then still waiting on the front porch because for some reason this dog doesn't, I've never had her run away. I've never really had to chase her down the block. They, it's, they're so connected to you that even if they get out of the fence or what happened to me was she was just waiting on the front porch patiently and I had no idea where she was. The point I'm trying to make is just because you have a fenced in yard doesn't mean you're ready. You know, be ready to watch them and make sure holes aren't getting dug. They're going to find animals. They're going to kill animals. They're going to find ways over the fence you didn't think were possible. She used, she used our hot tub to get on a stair platform to launch herself off of a garbage can to get over the fence at one point. She also found a way to dig under a gap about that big. So whatever you think you've done that makes you ready, come back and post a comment in about six months if you just got a puppy. And then I'll, we'll see who won that battle because I'm pretty sure you're gonna be like, whoops, I forgot about this. But mistake I made was just preparation. Be prepared, check the yard, get it ready to go and you'll be in good shape. The next biggest mistake I made, guys, was I was not ready physically for the exercise demands of this dog, right? So you have just walks you could do, which is plenty if you go on long walks, but I was working remote, I was sitting down every day, and I just, I didn't have the energy that she had, so it took me a while to condition myself to own this dog. That can be running around out back, that can be just having enough speed to catch her to, you know, put her in her crate before you're leaving because she's making you run circles around the house. But be ready for the exercise needs. Don't make that mistake because it's one of the most important things for them mentally. 
and physically, and then it won't be an issue you have to deal with. And the exact same thing can be said about the gear that you get. If you use the description down below, I have a ton of the recommended gear that I use, and a lot of it is geared towards exercise. But you need to have the correct gear um, to walk them with ease into where you're not mentally having issues with going on the walks, because they will pull, they will bark, they will not like when they see a squirrel when they're young. They will not like vehicles that drive by when they're young. And they might pull or they might get scared. So have a good harness, have a good leash, have some good treats that you can clicker train them with, and just be prepared. If there's any moral of the story that I want to get across more than anything from this video is that it's an awesome dog to adopt. None of these mistakes should deter you from them. But preparation is going to be your best friend. If you think you're prepared, prepare a little more. If you think you're underprepared, prepare a lot more. Prepare for what you're doing when you go on vacation. Prepare for what you're doing if you have to go somewhere overnight. Prepare for where they're gonna sleep. Prepare for what they're gonna do to the yard. Prepare for who they're gonna bark at. Just prepare. The more you know now, the better off you're gonna be the day that you bring your dog home. And then you will not have this list of all these mistakes that I've had in this video. And another thing you can do that's just going to help everybody else out watching this is drop comments on some of the mistakes that you made so that other people can learn from somebody other than Luna and I here. You know, I'm only one person. I only have one of these dogs. There's probably hundreds of you watching this video that know five times as much as I do. I'm not naive enough not to admit that. So help people out. Drop some comments down below. And of course, guys, if you did find this helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up on this video. We appreciate it greatly. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing now. Don't forget, we have a new video every Sunday at 11 a.m. Central. This channel has exploded in ways that we didn't think would ever happen, honestly. It was, you know, more about educating everybody else that wanted this dog because it was kind of a struggle for me in the beginning and I had owned dogs. And then it became this big community, so we appreciate that. We want it to keep growing. We're having a blast with it. Turn on notifications so you catch every video on Sundays at 11 a.m. Don't forget the link in the description below for the recommended gear. And never forget to check out TerrierOwner.com. Tons of useful blogs and things that we've never even covered on this channel that could help you out. Otherwise, guys, we appreciate you. And we'll see you for another video next Sunday. Take care.